In my very last video we did this test and discharged the lithium iron phosphate battery here with my Christmas light bulb setup and the cheap power analyzer. And we got a result of 778 watt hours, which is 243 ampere hours out of this 280 ampere hour battery. And we were wondering and discussing if this power meter is actually accurate. So there were some discussions on under my video and I'm really thankful for all this information you posted there. And some of the comments suggested I should measure the voltage drop on these cables actually leading from the battery to the meter. Because over the time of 11 hours we did this test, there is a certain amount of energy lost by the cables and connections. I mentioned in my last video that cables and connections and also the, um, the circuit breaker got warm. So there's heaps of heat loss on these cables, obviously, which we need to factor in into our result. And because we can just measure the voltage drop on these cables and connections from the meter to the battery, and we've got the uh, current here as well, we can easily calculate the power we are losing in this part of the setup. We don't need to care about losing any energy here on these cables after the meter, because this is all part of our load. So I don't really care if we burn all the energy in these light bulbs here or on the cable. It does basically the same job. It, it, uh, tran it transforms the energy into heat, either in the light bulb or in the heat loss in the cable and connection. So we only have to worry about what is in front of the meter. And I actually cannot really measure inside the meter. So the first measure point would be the cables here to the meter. This would be our, our first point. And then we measure and see what voltage drop and what power we are losing on these connections. Okay, now I have put the camera in super wide. So you may get a little bit of distortion on the on the corners, but so you can see the whole setup now. So I measure here directly from the negative terminal contact to our negative input of the meter, and we've got 54.6 millivolt. And I'll quickly do the same here with the positive terminal and go to the other side. And this measures the, um, the, the heat loss inside the circuit breaker as well. So I'm expecting this to be a bit more, 122.3 millivolt. Okay, so we have now measured 54.6 millivolt on the negative terminal times 23.85 amps is 1.3 watts we are losing on the negative terminal from here, including the XT60 connector and the four millimeter cable and the connection here at the terminal. And the same calculation for the positive terminal results in 2.9 watts for the positive terminal because we've got the circuit breaker and more connections in between. All in total, 4.2 watts. We are losing on this side of the input of the, of the meter. Uh, times 11 hours, that was the test we had it running on Sunday. Uh, this results in 46.4 watt hours and divided by 3.2 volts, it is 14.5 ampere hours. There is the result. 14.5 ampere hours is lost just on these cables. And I'm adding these 14.5 ampere hours to our measured 243 ampere hours and we get 258 ampere hours roughly out of the battery. This is what we have discharged out of the battery. We lost about 14.5 ampere hours on our setup until we reached the meter. But we still discharge this energy, of course. So almost 260 ampere hours out of 280. So we are coming actually closer to the promised capacity. And I guess the rest is just, well, the bad calculation from watt hours back to ampere hours, assuming a constant voltage of 3.2. And then the cheap power meter here as well may not work correctly so so all in total this result with this equipment here in my christmas light setup is actually not too bad we are very close to the promised and advertised 280 ampere hours of this battery cell so i really cannot wait until the other battery tester is coming in the capacity tester and we do a proper test again i also have some um, thicker cables here um, i think i've got 10 millimeter cable here i've got 10 millimeter 10 millimeter cable there as well. I'll do some 
better cabling. So I can actually use a thicker cable to run this new test then. Just want to minimize all the losses, but with the next test I will measure the voltage drop on the cables anyway straight away. So we can factor this in when we do the calculation. All right, guys, this quick video just as an update as per your suggestions on my last video. Thank you again for all your comments and all your feedback and all your information you provided. This is really great and helpful. And I'm super happy that we are creating this community now and helping each other out with all this information. As always, thank you so much for watching and for all your comments. And we shall see us again in the next video coming very soon. Thanks, guys. See you then. Bye bye.